starting, yeah. Okay. Hi guys, my name is Fatai. I'm a hospitalist uh, working in South Carolina, and we're here again, uh, me and my friend Mubarak Yusuf, um, talking about some of the things we encounter uh, in internal medicine, uh, in my case as a hospitalist, and in his case as a resident. So um, the question that kind of triggered this part of the conversation was uh, a question about um, uh, end of life care, the com initiating conversations, how to navigate the conversations, you know, just trying to make sure at the end of the day, um, you're, you're doing your best in that regard because it's still part of the care. So I'll, I'll let Mubarak introduce himself and then go ahead and then yeah, start that conversation. Hi, my name is Mubarak. I'm a first year resident here in Bronx, New York. And I'm here with my friend and my mentor to uh, learn and also to share some uh, important conversation. conversation. Uh, so the question today actually I have for you is, when do you get end of life, right? How do you go about do you go a primary team alone or do you actually involve the palliative team to guide you all throughout and uh, start this other all right, so Mubarak, the, the connection was breaking up a little bit, but I'm just going to recap from what I thought you said because we, we, we've, you told me about this question where you said, when is it best to initiate a conversation uh, about end-of-life uh, care? Um, how do you go about it? Do you do it as a primary team, um, whether you're the floor team or you're the ICE team? Do you do it by yourself or you involve you know, palliative um uh, and then the last part is probably a part that I missed. Okay, the last part is I like maybe a backup question I have after you answer that part. Okay, all right. So let, let let's yeah. let's you know go from from where we are. Um, you know, and again, everybody, I, I think I think first and foremost, when you talk about end of life care, one of the parts that we don't, I, I'm not a palliative, you know, specialist or you know what or whatever. I, internal medicine training alone, but obviously through internal medicine, you have to rotate through palliative medicine and you kind of get some of the concepts, you know, from there. Everybody should, I think. Um, one of the most important things that I, I concentrate on when it comes to end-of-life care is this fundamental principle of empathy. Because, you know, whether you like it or not, whether the patient is, you know, has like 50 different comorbidities and they're just hanging on or they're just young, you know, middle-aged female or male, you know, who has the life ahead of them. Regardless of what the patient looks like, you cannot remove the humanity in that patient. Whether you're trying to get through your day and trying to make sure, you know what, this patient doesn't come to the ICU or this patient goes to the ICU, the problem becomes, and the problem begins when you start to remove the humanity in that patient, essentially. You're not seeing them as an individual. You're not seeing their family as individuals. You're not, the reason why I said empathy is you're literally not putting yourself in their shoes. And that I think is crucial, 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 crucial when you're thinking about end of life care. If you can't deploy empathy, I don't think you can do a really good job with end of life discussions or palliative medicine. It's impossible to. But if you deploy empathy, empathy doesn't mean you're sugarcoating anything. Empathy doesn't mean you're minimizing or exaggerating. Empathy is, first of all, putting you, trying to put yourself in the shoes and trying to think about what would happen if you were on that other side and then starting the conversation. If you're deploying empathy again, that's what will inform you that, you know what, I'm not gonna start this conversation five days into this patient's ICU stay where they are already completely confused as to what to expect and they're completely on another tangent. Empathy in that regard would mean that, you know what, I understand what is happening here. I understand the prognosis and I do not want to wait. I want to start that conversation as early as possible. And the general understanding around palliative care is, especially when it comes to ICU patients, is 
that you should start, you should initiate the conversation the moment the patient comes to the ICU. That's when you should start that conversation. You get what I mean? Right, you should initiate that conversation the moment the patient comes to the ICU. So, you have a patient in septic shock, multi-organ failure. You know, just from your understanding of medicine in general, that one organ failure carries probably about 20% mortality. You know, when you add multiple organs there, ah, you're not dealing with much else. I mean, much left. So you have to be able to communicate that to that patient. And the way you communicate is to list all the problems individually, as straight up as you possibly can, and get the patients and their families to understand how all of the problems work together to impact their survival. And then you start it off. You, you're not, the problem is, why, would, why wouldn't you have patients and their family at loggerheads with the physicians? When the time we remember to call them is when something happens. And then we're trying to convince them not to pursue, you know, recovery. We say, you know what, you know, and that's what happens. You've seen it. I've seen it too many times already. What happens is, oh, you know what? Um, I don't think the patient is, you know, I don't think, you know, blah, 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 is going to make it. And I think it'll be futile. Why do you have to start there? You're already starting from the wrong foot. If you, if you were in that situation, you wouldn't want somebody to start a conversation with you when, you know, they went into cardiac arrest and now you're like, you know, they have an oxygen brain injury. You, you want somebody to start the conversation with you. To just honestly, that alone shows that you care. And the problem with what happens between physicians and patients is they're not able to see that we care. The only thing that they see is us trying to, you know, just finish a job and run or trying to conserve the hospital uh, resources or trying to uh, 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 minimize our work because that's how we appear to them because we didn't talk to them about the prognosis in the beginning. We started a conversation you know, like when something happened, how are they supposed to see that? 